the arena here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast is really uh, an economic generator and has been since the day it was built. Uh, the amount of people that we bring into town on an annual basis uh, exceeds a half a million uh, year in, year out. And those people come in, they spend money, they, they eat in our restaurants, they play at our, in our casinos, uh, they, they stay in our hotels, they shop in our stores, uh, they buy goods and services. And that's what we're here to do, is to, is to drive the economy and bring more business to town. Uh, the Mississippi Coast Coliseum was, was built back in 1976. It's an easy drive for the entire coast, the one coast. People are happy to come down and come see a show. This is considered a medium-sized venue. We do multiple different shows here. We, we do dance recitals, we do country western, we've done uh, uh, drama shows, uh, we do summer fairs, uh, festivals, and so we're a multifunction facility. Yeah, the, the, the Coliseum has had a reputation in the past that it was a hard rig. Uh, and, and all the promoters knew that coming into it and uh, the riggers for these various touring companies, uh, they knew that coming into it. The reason that we uh, pursued getting a, a rigging grid in the arena was the fact that we'd had complaints for many, many years from uh, touring professionals, from uh, tour managers, from uh, artist representatives, uh, the artist agencies that Biloxi's too hard to play. It takes too long to rig, it's more expensive to rig. Uh, we have to have a day before for the bigger shows to where we can pre-rig and it just doesn't route in, into our plans on how we have to route the tours. And, and so there, there were so many shows that passed over us and so many shows that never even called us because they had that information. So we knew for a long time that we needed this apparatus. No question that we had to have it. It just really became a matter of how do we afford it. Uh, we are, we're not tax supported. We have to generate all the funds that, that operate this building by the events that we produce. So therefore, uh, a structure like this and the expense of putting it in really had to be worked out as to where the funding would come from. We were fortunate to get funding through a BP Restore Act grant uh, that our governor, Phil Bryant, uh, made sure that we got. And that grant is what's allowed us now to engineer this project and, and get it installed. My role as the administrative piece of this and the paperwork is making sure every requirement that the Department of Treasury requires that we complete all of that with MBQ and then work with the engineer, Simpkins and Costelli, and Ron Luchin, our technical director, who has all the experience of the grid, the initial grid system and what we need going forward in the industry and production, um, to Matt, our executive director, who, who knows the building so well. And then working with Simpkins and Costelli with, and then we get everybody else involved, like the XSF and the manufacturing, the fabrication of what we want to see for the building, um, and then the subcontractors and the electrical and um, the, to the demolition of the existing to what we're working on now and putting up the new. So there are so many moving parts and people involved on the team that it is truly a group effort to see a project like this come, come to life. We were able to uh, get some grant money and uh, we, we went to the engineers and asked them what we could put in this building and again, consulting our own riggers and the clients, uh, promoters, who come into the building, uh, I and the engineers asked them what, what they needed. And, uh, and we, we put out feelers to different suppliers. Uh, what, what could they do and how could we do it? Initially, we had a lot of discussions internally with um, Simpkins and Castelli and Michael and Maddie and Ron on what we want this grid to look like, you know, what size of the grid, how much material we can use, what can we really work within the, a budget that we had for this project, um, and then let some Castelli take it from there, and they've done a great job as well. We're a civil structural engineering firm, and we've been working for the Coliseum for at least 25 years, helping them on shows, rigging, and so forth. And early on, uh, probably around Hurricane Katrina time, we were presented with the need for a grid. Our relationship with XSF and, and their associates has been uh, really good because even before the bid job was bid, 
uh, XSF rendered invaluable help in enabling us to put together contract documents that would allow uh, a bid to go out to the public and that they could re you could respond to and, and provide the quality product that, that you do. Some of the challenges that we faced uh, prior to uh, this recent effort has been trying to understand the structural nature of this geodesic dome. It's a steel framed uh, structure and we had no information from the original designer so we had to cobble together our own structural approaches and then in this particular effort we were able to enlist the assistance of some structural engineers who have helped us in the years past to refine our analysis and become more accurate. My role was to do the analysis of the roof structure to make a 3D model and determine what the capacity of the roof might be. With this analysis, we looked at shows that we're touring now and trying to look at some of the heavier shows and determine what they were and be able to take that and maybe increase it a little bit. The limiting factor for this building was the roof structure because it's existing. These trusses are capable of supporting far more than what the roof is and so that was our limiting factor. What we see is um, arenas that have a long two-day load in because of the challenge in the facility. Taking a system like this, spending a month to get it installed, turns all of their big heavy shows from two-day load ins to one-day load in. They, uh, a big show, you know, somebody like uh, Disney on Ice or, uh, you know, a big rock and roll show or something like that can get in here in, here in the morning, have the show rigged by mid-afternoon, floating up in the air ready for showtime, and by the time doors open, that day, you know, and then they're loading out. If it's a one day show, they're loading out that evening and they're gone. So this new grid system is capable of spreading the load because it's much wider than where the hangers were before. They've got many more points that they can hang from on a 15 by 15 grid, whereas before they just had cables at random spacings that they had to swing and make bridles and a lot of times they were bridling between existing structures and not even using the hangers. One of the first challenges that I encountered was in the analysis of the dome structure is fitting a square grid into a round dome, <laughs> getting everything to line up and hang properly. You didn't get to hang it exactly like you would prefer, so that was a challenge. And then we were looking at a steel grid system and the weight of that was just so great that we started looking into the aluminum system, which I wasn't very familiar with, but working with XSF we learned a lot and we're able to get a system that works. With a dome like this, <clears throat> it's just so difficult because all of the rig points, when, when a rigger comes in from off the road, he's walking into an arena that he doesn't work in every single day, and every single point in the air is at a different elevation, which means all of your rigging, steel, your bridles become much more difficult and more time consuming to uh, you know, run through all those calculations and get everything in the right spot and at the right elevation. Whereas when you have a flat level grid with rig points over 15 feet, as well as truss going, you know, in a grid in both directions, and those motors go in super fast. They go up fast, they go down fast. And that's where you, you overcome the challenges of loading in and out of a show like that. We've had two or three different designs and XSF had the best one. And, uh, you know, from what I'm seeing right now, it's going to be great. Originally, we were contacted by uh, Simpkins and Costelli. They contacted us with just some questions. They'd seen other arena grids and, you know, other locations. And it was just a basic, you know, kind of reach out and see, you know, kind of fill us out and what they should look for and what kind of load ratings that we could provide and what kind of different options we had and so after a, a few conversations with with uh, Michael and Maddie um, they we gave them some you know additional information and some drawings and specifications on our trust and they developed the bid package for the Coast Call Sam. XSF was able to show us a lot of past projects that they've done and they had a lot of information about different loading of trusses and industry standards of spacing so that we could make sure that we were getting the Coliseum exactly what they needed to stay up to par with all the other um, event 
venues. Fortunately, uh, we had the right engineer that understood this building and knew this building better than any other engineering company in America. And they were able to, to, to reach out and find the right parts and pieces and make it all fit into the bid process. Now we have to procure a engineer, which is Simpkins and Castelli. So that's who I worked with directly. They are the contract um, engineer for the grid project. And then Simpkins and Castelli did a lot of the legwork in working with XSF um, and working with some contractors to see the project through and execute the project. Once they had the bid package developed, um, then of course it goes out for bids at that point. Um, general contractors bid on the project, J.O. Collins wins the project, and then we become a vendor for J.O. Collins. And so about six months of uh, preliminary design, um, drawings, documents, then after the bid was awarded, um, we had we have to go through engineering. So we get, we'd sit down, iron out all the little details with uh, with Michael and Maddie, um, we, we developed a set of shop drawings, or basically rough concept drawings. That we think the truss will be this size, we think we'll connect it using this connection, we think your load ratings will be approximately in this range, um, but we can't confirm that until we go through engineering. And that's where um, we use Clark Reader Engineering <clears throat> for this project. So we turn all the documents over to Michael. Michael approves the general design. General design goes to Clark Reader. Jeff Reader does all the engineering on that. And it took um, a couple of months of back and forth. You know, we need to tweak things here, and Michael wanted to tweak things there. And so it took a couple of months to get the, uh, the engineering ironed out. And um, then once that's all approved, we put the project into fabrication, develop the shop drawings, goes through our shop, we fabricate it. Um, we put it all together, put all the trust together in our shop, um, take it apart, go get it powder coated, and then the, uh, the Coliseum had some space for us to store the product, so we would, when we had a full truckload, we would send a truck out, they would store it off to the side. Two weeks later, another truck comes out, and they store that off to the side, and so it's all here waiting and ready. I've been working through on this process and seen many drawings, pictures of the uh, trust system from XSF, and uh, just seeing the, the way their shop drawings came through, I was impressed with all of that. And when the material arrived here on site, we came here and unloaded it. Myself and an operator came here and unloaded it. I was very impressed by the quality of the material. The wells were exceptional on it. Everything looked like it was packaged up real well. As we moved it into the arena and started unwrapping it, uh, the, the workmanship uh, came to light then. Uh, as it's going together and the bolt-on uh, fabrication of it uh, has, has uh, really been good. As it goes together now, I'm finally seeing the fruition of all this work everybody's put together and uh, I'm very pleased with the quality of the work. The main benefit for having a grid uh, like this put into a 43-year-old building is now we're not just a 43-year-old building anymore. We're a building that can handle large amounts of weight. They can get in, in in one day and do it efficiently, keep their labor bills down, and it allows us to bring in more shows that we were losing because of the inability to rig in this building efficiently. So now, by having this grid, Shows don't have to, 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 to arrive at 6 a.m., they can arrive at 8 a.m. Uh, we don't have to push doors back because it takes longer to rig in this building. Uh, they, in most cases, they can rig these shows in four to five hours. We won't have to have quite as many riggers. We certainly won't have to have equipment uh, like boom lifts to come in to, to uh, make sure that the rigging is done safely and, and as efficient as it could have been under our old conditions. So all of it's a positive and it saves money, saves time, and it gives the artist and their touring personnel a much better experience here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum. You know, we're not old school 1977 Coliseum anymore. We're doing these upgrades for our guests um, to give a better experience um, and a heightened experience and more exciting experience. So to see that scoreboard and now 
you know, Ron called me today, hey, a piece of the grid's going up, so I could go out and, and see it. And it's kind of, you know, the fruits of your labor. And it's so exciting seeing something like that being executed, knowing what it took to get to this point. For me, again, the safety is such a big deal, so I just see like, wow, this is so much better than where we were. So the safety aspect of the trust system is phenomenal. Um, the safety system that was put in place by XSF is great. Um, but just overall seeing this brand new black trust system that is going to make, I just, I just know how easy it's going to make our production. It's going to, the, the money it's going to save us. People are going to come in. People are going to be talking about our building on the road. You know, those promoters, those live nations, those the AEGs are going to be like, wow, the Coliseum, like it, it was easy in and out. Um, we've also got a great team of riggers. I mean, they can come in now and, and have more confidence in their job and what they're doing and enjoy what they're doing a lot more. And there's a lot of, be there's a lot of pieces that this is going to affect. Yeah, so the original loads that were being hung from this building Building were roughly 70 to 80,000 pounds on average and they were having to swing in order to hang these shows and now just the A stage alone will be capable of supporting 120,000 pounds with added capacity from the center and B stage supports and they will be able to rig it much faster in one day in and out. The teamwork uh, for this whole project, you know, it started off with the engineers, and of course that had to go through a, a bidding process. And then we, we've got the, the main subcontractor, which is J.O. Collins, and the supplier is, is XSF, and the, the assembly company is, is Tim Condor. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a process. It's, it's four or five groups of people, and uh, yeah, we've got our, we've got our uh, our questions and uh, they've been answered promptly and uh, you know and, and we're as you can see we're still right in the middle of it but uh, it's uh, the the end product's going to be great. Uh, after J.O. Collins was awarded the project and they contacted us um, we worked closely with Clark Matthews through all of the engineering and design and with Jeff Reeder and was, everyone was happy with the package we have it um, in fabrication um, Clark was still having some challenges finding a, uh, a contractor to do the installation. And so uh, I'd put him in touch with a, a list of people and in talking, when he was talking to, to Tim Condor, uh, it just seemed like a real good fit. Tim and I flew down, we walked through the building with Clark and um, talked about some of those challenges that, that, that we're gonna have installing this grid. Uh, Tim felt confident that he could, you know, do the job and stay within budget, and uh, it's it's been a really good relationship. You know, once Tim was awarded the project, um, you know we talk weekly about it. We had weekly meetings set up with Clark, just whether we needed him or not, just to make sure we stayed on top of any design changes, any engineering changes, anything that would affect the installation. And um, while Tim was organizing all the the personnel and equipment behind the scenes to, to be here ready for the installation. The team that I'm responsible to, which are the engineers, XSF, the venue, I really see my role as being some of the glue in between those. The engineers have worked together for months to come up with what XSF can build. XSF builds it, there's an expectation from the venue, and then I kind of tie together um, those entities to execute these plans that have been going on for over a year. You know, one of the, the really unique challenges of this system was trying to develop two different grids that are fitting between three different catwalks and rigidly attaching those two grids between these these three catwalks. So there was there was some unique challenges. So in the preliminary meetings we just kind of did a walk around and um, Take a look at it, sit down and talk about some of the some of those challenges. And um, but no, that was generally a meeting with the Coliseum. And then uh, after the uh, project had been awarded, <clears throat> then we came out and met with J.O. Collins and uh, with Clark Matthews and worked through some of the more technical details of how we're going to implement this. You know, it's now it's beyond just designing a truss system. Now it's how do we actually fit these two grids in between those three catalogs. 
and it, it's it's not an easy task but we uh, you know we spent a couple of site visits and uh, several weeks coming up with a plan that we think is going to make for a relatively easy install considering the circumstances. Normally on a grid like this it's laid out like in 15 foot bays. You have, you know, both directions you have 15 foot bays. So you want your your uh, rigging points, you know, the hang points, at all of those 15 foot intersections and <clears throat> it makes it real simple that way. All of the truss becomes engineered in the same fashion, the load ratings for each truss are the same. Um, there's not really any big surprises when you can do it that way. In a dome like this, we're trying to put a square grid under what would be considered, you know, a, a geodesic framework. And you can't, it's just not a perfect world. So we had to uh, work with uh, Michael Costelli on how we would lay that grid out to hang the truss. So the, the rig points that are hanging the truss are not necessarily on a uniform 15 foot by 15 foot grid. However, from a rigger standpoint, underneath the grid, they're still able to hang load off of it as if it's being supported on a 15 foot by 15 foot grid, which simplifies things for riggers on site and doing load calculations or estimates or things like that. And the, the way we um, engineered around that, Jeff Reeder was a part of that, he, he had to analyze the truss a little differently than he normally would. And it meant that the truss grew by about four inches. So it, it got a little bit deeper, which makes it a little bit stiffer, a little bit stronger, and lets us put um, kind of a semi-sporadic support layout with a very uniform rigging layout underneath. So the, the general process is when XSF has shipped their equipment and we've received it here at the venue, we inventory it, we spread it out, we have a timeline and daily plans of where we're going to work and what we're going to accomplish. So keeping materials in and out of the way um, is a big part of what I see as my job and also organizing the things to put together. So the plan is to put a piece of the grid together today that gets attached and flown up. By attached, we have riggers that go up in high lifts. There's no existing way to reach the ceiling, so we have to have riggers go up in a lift. And they we have a hoist package for them to uh, basically rig to the ceiling. We attach to the XSF truss, pull it up and uh, attach it to the roof, and then we dismount the uh, hoist package. So after, you know, two years of preliminary design, bid documents, and engineering, and fabrication, and now we're here in the middle of installation. We've got uh, the grid B, the smaller grid is already up in the air. Um, grid A is going up in three lifts, so the uh, stage right lift is already in the air. Stage left lift is going up almost as we speak, you can hear them working in the background. And then the um, the center stage portion of grid A is already assembled down there on the floor and it's on casters and once the, the two outside thirds are in place, we'll roll the middle one in and lift it up and get it all in place, bolt everything up in the air and you know we're just you know, probably two days away from having all this flying and it's exciting to see it. So as we were putting the truss together and we knew that maybe there was um, some flexibility in the venue as far as the existing grid. When the truss went into place, um, we found out that some of our concerns about how close or how far off measurements were, um, we realized the engineers in XSF had, had done their due diligence and all of that came together and, and was evident when the thing, when the grids flew into place. So many people were so used to the last 40 years of this building. Um, not many things had changed. Um, we're doing major changes to make it that much more fun to be here. People are going to want to be here more often. Um, but yeah, we're, we're very excited to open those doors again and bring everybody back. We're going to be bigger and better. Knowing that the venue and the engineer for the venue have seen this thing on paper for well over a year, it's it's rewarding and it's cool to see them walk through and see it physically and see it in place and just to see that kind of timeline or assuming this timeline for them come to fruition. It's a really, uh, it's a revealing and, a, and really rewarding um, 
anything to be able to see from them. Walking into that room and seeing the uh, grid being uh, assembled and, and, and hoisted, uh, it just gives you a feeling of pride and accomplishment for what we were able to do uh, through uh, the engineering effort and with the support of everybody that's, that, that worked with us. From a teamwork aspect, uh, getting, uh, it helped that, first of all, that Mike and Tim knew each other uh, and were able to know what they had to do but from a total teamwork aspect uh, with the engineering, the Ron from the arena, myself, uh, working together uh, to make sure everything was here on time, everything goes in as it was expected to go in, and that the sub and the supplier had everything here on time and when needed. And, and that has happened, and every, I think, as far as I know, everybody is happy with the way everything has come together. I feel fortunate to be part of the process and part of the solution here at Mississippi Coast Coliseum. It's a lot bigger than you would think, than a piece of paper would show, but it is exciting and it's just a relief knowing that it's finally here. We, we can do it all now with no hesitation. As far as this project goes, it's really exciting to see the trust grid finally up in the air and, and to realize everything from paper to material on the ground and then see it in place. Yeah, the team effort with J.O. Collins, XSF, uh, Simpkins and Costelli and the Coliseum together has been a great work ethic. We've been able to all understand the needs and wants and it's just coming together nicely. Speaking for J.O. Collins, we were ecstatic to get this job. We're happy to see this come to a fruition and have this job completed. Uh, as I've said before, working with everybody has been a pleasure and we look forward to seeing the end of this and, and bringing uh, new entertainment into the coast that wasn't available to come here before. We are so excited for this future of this building and our capabilities now and what we can do, bigger, better, beyond what we've done before. Um, we've really enhanced our guest experience here at the Mississippi Coast Coliseum and Convention Center and we can't wait. It's really cool to be able to come out on, on the job site and be a part of it and get to see the final product and get to visit with the customer. And they, they all seem very excited about it as well and thrilled and that they, um, they've expressed to us that you know, this is exactly what they needed and exactly what they wanted and, and it's gonna change the way they do business here for the better, so we're just glad to be a part of that. This uh, new grid system, uh, the main grid and then the uh, B stage, uh, enables the uh, Coliseum to put on bigger and better shows and uh, that's going to be translate into more income, more popularity, and that should spread through the country and through the rigging companies and the, the different venues will know that Biloxi has now got a uh, system to compete with the rest of the nation. Yeah.